Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about dice rolling in Harlow 3. In analog tabletop games, one of the most common actions is to roll dice. In Harlow, the same outcome can be accomplished through using the random macro. We can roll different dice, that is, give the random macro different ranges to get a random number within that range. In this case, the equivalent of rolling a 1d6, a pretty common action in a analog tabletop game, we'd give it a range of 1 to 6. Right here we got 1 back. If we wanted 1 to 8, we get 7, 1d10, 1d12, 1d20, 1d100. All very common analog tabletop dice rolling results. We would roll a dice and we'd get a number back. To save the result of the random macro, we use the set macro. We're setting some value as the result of some other expression. If the result does not matter outside of the roll itself, a temporary variable can be used. That is, we can save that result, do something with it, and then it won't matter after the passage. The temporary variable will be erased when the passage moves on. And that gives us a good way to save results as we're working on statistics to calculate some things and then not have to worry about having extra variables around within the greater story because they won't exist after the story moves on because they're temporary. And in this case, we see two different examples of that. The result of 2d6, adding two different roles, two different usage of the random macro, and used down here of 2d12 plus 3, another very common example from a role-playing tabletop game where you might roll some dice and add some numbers, 2d12 plus 3 would be a common example here, and as we'll look at the code, we're adding different uses of the random macro together, combining them all together, and temporarily saving that result, and then we would use it to maybe calculate or do something else in a greater example. Let's go look at the code, though. As I mentioned, when we're using the random macro, we're supplying a range, the initial number and the last number. In this case, 1, 6, because we want a number between 1 and 6. If we wanted a number between 1 and 8, the second example, we would do the same here, 1, 8. 1, 10, 1, 12, 1, 20, 1, 100. All very common examples in an analog tabletop environment of a 1d6, a 1d8, 1d10, 1d12, 1d20, 1d100. The initial number and the last number when using the random macro. As I mentioned, for more complex examples, where we might be adding multiple dice rolls together, we would use multiple usage of the random macro. We would give it the same range. If we wanted, for example, right here, 2d6, we'll go random 1, 6 plus random 1, 6 for 2d6. Rolling, that is, getting a random number between 1 and 6 each time, and then adding those together. The same down here for 2d12 plus 3. We're saving this as a temporary variable, notice the underscore, and we're adding the result of 1, 12 and the random result of 1, 12 plus 3. So adding all of those together and we get our final number. In fact, if we rerun re this, we see we get different results. The 2d6 gave us 9 this time and the 2d12 plus 3 gave us 12 this time. And you notice in the debug view, it gives us those results as well so we can see what they are. So as I reviewed in this video, we can do dice rolling, or the equivalent that is, within Harlow using the random macro. We can roll within a range, 1, 6, or 1, 100, depending on what range we want. We can also save those results using the set macro and combine multiple rolls, multiple uses of the random macro together for a larger result. And, as I mentioned, if we don't necessarily need those results past some calculations within a single passage, we can use temporary variables to save those results, do some calculations, maybe compare some statistics together, do something, and then not have to worry about those variables in another passage because they won't exist anymore being temporary. Thanks for watching.